Because he's faithful to us. Because he has promised us new mercies. Every morning we get up. And because he has made that promise, it's the mercies of God that's keeping a lot of us. We should have been gone a long time ago. We should have been consumed a long time ago. But it's because of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. I want to use four texts today, very simple, taken from uh, the Gospel of St. John, where we have read chapter 15, where it says, No greater love hath any man than this, than for man to what? Lay down his life for his friend. No greater love, subject text, a love we can trust. A love that we can trust. You can't trust every love. But the love of God is a love that you can trust. Amen. Amen. It's a love that you can depend on and don't have to worry about. Because it's a type of love that doesn't have a faucet reaction. You can't turn this one on. Turn it back off when you feel like. But this is a continual love that you can trust. And in him will I put all of my trust. The love of Christ is the greatest love that exists. There's no greater love. And that word greater takes on the meaning much more than ordinary. So this is not an ordinary love. Greater alludes to much higher in quality or degree. It's much above average. This is not an average love. When something is greater, that means it is imminent. It is distinguished. It is illustrious. It is superior when something is greater. The love of Christ is superior to any love in the world. You won't ever find a love like the love of Christ. Yeah. Anybody been searching for any other? So I'm right, so I looked all over, but I couldn't find it. Yeah. Hallelujah. It's a love that we can trust. A love that we can depend on. Amen. It's a love that's very impressive. It loves on purpose. Amen. Anybody ever met a love that love on purpose? Amen. It loves for no special reason. Amen. It loves in spite of. Yes, yes, yes. It loves to the very end, to the very end, and it loves when it's not even received back. Yes. This is the love that Jesus has for us. And, and I like the part that it loves to the end because there's some love that it'll cut off. That's right. yeah. Yeah. That's right. and, and, and the sad part about it, you don't even know it's cut off. That's right. You think it's still there, but it has been cut off. Right. But the love of Jesus never cuts off. He loves to the end. Right. Yes. You'll go all the way, he'll go all the way to the end. According to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 8, 
the Bible declares that God is love. That his very nature is love. He is the personification of perfect love. Such love surpasses our powers of understanding. You can't even comprehend this kind of love because it's so great, it surpasses our power and our ability to understand this type of love. This love, look at your name and say, this love, this love. is everlasting. Oh yes. Uh, yes, it's from everlasting to everlasting. Glory to God, it never ends. Let, let, let me tell you about something that I uh, uh, didn't actually witness, but a friend of mine, a guy used to work with me, witnessed it because it was the uncle he came back and told me the story. And there was a comparison made to the love of Christ and a mango. Anybody like mango? What is the season? It's almost here. I, know. I used to get a lot of mangoes on somebody treated them gifts and I ain't calling nobody name. But listen, you ever heard of the hate? That's that big tree. Orange, red, sometimes it looks green, but it's this is big. When it gets ripe, it looks so tempting. So the story goes that this young man had an uncle who loved mangoes. And he had a nice heat and really solid and wasn't soft. It was put in the refrigerator and got cold. And when he began to slice it and cut it, it was so good he just couldn't help himself and say, My, my, my. You ever hey, you ate something so good you had to say, my, my, my. Uh -huh. So he began to say to his nephew, he said, nephew? Nephew said, yeah, uncle. He said, this hating is so good. He said, ain't nothing sweeter and better than this hating but the love of Jesus. Amen. I said, my, my, my. That must be a real good hating because nothing compares to the love of Jesus. He said, nothing sweeter than this but the love of Jesus. Amen. And I thought about that thing when I was studying this text. And I, I want you to know, I don't care what kind of fruit you get and where you get it from. It cannot compare to the love of Jesus. I don't care how good it is, how sweet it is, how much you enjoy it. When you get through Jesus, love is still above that fruit. I can't get no witness to that. So the next time you eat something real good, just say it's good, but it ain't sweeter than Jesus. His love, his love is greater than that. Amen. So, so, so we come to realize now that Christ's love for us is divine. It's unchangeable. It's superior. Superior. It's inseparable. It's self-sacrificing. It's constraining. And it was manifested by his death. In other words, it was proven that it was superior by his death. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about no greater love has any man than this for a man to lay down his life for who he called his friend. It was proven for his death. Would anybody else die for you? So it was manifested by his death. He laid down his life for us. He laid down his life for us. Your mama couldn't do it. Your son, your daughter, your daddy, nobody could do it. But the heavens would search him and they found someone worthy. He was referred to by John as the Lamb of God. That takes away the sins of the world. He was worthy to perform this duty. So now in the book of Lamentations, chapter 3, the prophet Jeremiah who was known as the weeping prophet. He was lamenting here. The Bible says Jeremiah bewails. He laments. He mourns his own calamities. God was doing something. Jeremiah had experienced some personal suffering. Anybody ever experienced some personal suffering? Of his own. Jeremiah was the prophet that was 
supposed to stand in the place for all the nation of Judah and, 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 and be there and, and represent them. But, but I want you to know that Israel messed up. So, 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 so Jeremiah also messed up. And he experienced some suffering as a result of his condition. It seemed like God had turned his hands against him. Anybody ever been there when it seemed like the hand of God was moved from you? And you begin to experience some stuff you never experienced before. God's hands of favor had now become his fist of adversity. God was punishing Jeremiah who represented Judah and himself because of sin. This suffering pushed the prophet to a confession of sin. It pushed him to an acknowledgement of God's justice. And a prayer came forth. Faith for forgiveness was produced. While Judah and Jeremiah was in their do-off condition, their sinful condition, God could have wiped them out. And not allowed them to retain status. And I want you to know that today, I want you to understand when you were in your do-off condition, when you were in a sinful condition, because the Bible says, for all have sinned and they have come short of the glory of God. When you was not thinking about God, when you was going around doing your own thing, God could have turned the light off and wiped you out. But I heard Jeremiah say, but I called to mind some things I began to remember about my God. What it was, Jeremiah, that you remembered? I remember that God was a merciful God. Oh, yes, God was a forgiving God. God was a just God. And I call to mind to remember those things. Every now and then we need to remember the goodness of God and who he is and what he is and what he contains on the inside of him. And when Jeremiah called to mind these things, he realized I could have been wiped out. Before I confessed, before I gave up, before I redeemed myself through him by forgiving him, I could have been wiped out. Do you not know that every time you step out of the ark of safety, you don't know if you're going to step back in? You could be wiped out with Jeremiah's I recall. My God, that he was merciful. And he said that these things came to me. And because of his mercy, I was not consumed. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, I would have been consumed a long time ago. But his grace and his mercy, it stayed with me. It brought me this far, and it will continue to carry me on. Say amen, somebody. But I want you to know every now and then, we need to remember where the Lord has brought us from. Remember the mercies of God. Remember the love of God. Say yes, somebody. It is of the Lord's mercy, I said, that we are not consumed every day. It's because of his compassion. And the Bible says his compassion fails not. There's no failing in his compassion. His mercy and his compassion, they are both new every day. Anybody had some new mercy when you got up? Anybody got some new compassion when you got up? He's faithful to produce it. Now listen. God is a just God. I want you to understand what I'm about to say. The Bible says that he suffers long. Or you might read it in your version that he's long suffering. Which means he suffers long. It's not talking about in this text when you read he suffer long that he's suffering bodily. Yeah. The understanding of that text is that 
He got to work on things for a long time. Can I make a plate to you? Can I put it in everyday language? He allows you to go in your contrary ways and mess up for a long time. Uh -huh. But he's looking, he's watching. Why is he doing it for a long time? Because it's not his will that any should perish. He's trying to get someone to come to repentance. So he suffers long. He lets you go. He lets you go. He lets you go. Sometimes he lets you go so long until you think you've gotten no way. This communion Sunday. Usually the communion message makes you search yourself. He suffers so long until you think, well, I, I, I think God had closed his eyes and went to sleep. But the last time I read it, that he had keep it in Come on, Bible scholar. Make another one. You know what I'm God eyes is not closed, but he suffers long. He suffers long. But after a while, after a while, look at your name and say, but after a while, he moves his hands. And he allows whatever to come upon you to come upon you. He allows whatever you got to go through to go through. Because he was trying to get your attention for a long time. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. If it had not been for his mercy on many occasions, like I keep saying, I can't help but say it again, it would have been consumed. But oh, how he loved us. Anybody know that God loves you? Oh, how he loves me.
unto the end. Hallelujah. From the time he chose them until the time he left them, he kept loving them. Look at your neighbor and say, can you find somebody to do that? Now listen, let me mess this up. That's what I call it. I call it messing up because some folks don't agree with you. So I guess I messed it up. A husband and wife supposed to be one. Am I right? They're supposed to love each other no matter how mad each other is. Am I, am I right? But sometimes the fire gets so hot. You begin to wonder is love still there? But this is supposed to be everlasting love. I love you in sickness. I love you when you're healthy. I love you when it's good. And I love you when it's bad. I love you when you're up. And I love you when you're down. But if you listen in, sometimes you wonder what happened to the love. Now, y'all thought I was going there for no reason, but I'm, I'm in the word. Now, watch the connection. Watch me cross the dots. Let's connect the dots. How is a husband supposed to love his wife? So I was wondering, how did Christ love the church? That's a lot of love. That's Bible. That's how we're supposed to do it. Don't you know he didn't owe you anything? He didn't have to die for you. You was in sin, not him. Hey, my God, I feel bad. He didn't do anything. He didn't all stop it. He said, I'm going to pay you a debt because you don't have enough to pay. Anybody ever went to the store and didn't have enough money to pay for the goods? Wonderful people, nothing ever really happens to them. So wonderful. It happened to me and Sister Rose. We had a learning experience when we first got married. We were just picking up all kinds of stuff in the back, like, like we had it like that. Remember that? Enough stuff. Got to the cashier and all I heard was clink, clink, clink. I said, hey! That's too much clink. So, so when the number came up, I think we done ran a show. You know that's right. So we gotta take this out. You gotta take it. That's embarrassing. Folks on this hill, they what, what they do. But the point I'm trying to bring out, you didn't have enough to pay your debt. Sin had you so wrapped up and messed up, you didn't have nothing equivalent to the right thing to pay it off. So Jesus said, Pump, have me a buck. And I'll go down. And I'll take care of that debt. Yeah. <laughs>
the most painful yes. statement a person can hear is, I don't love you anymore. Amen. That's a hurting thing. Especially when there was true love in you. It was so heavy too. It was thick like a cloud. You couldn't even see but all of a sudden you hear these words don't love you anymore those words end relationships those words break hearts those words shatter dreams oh hallelujah often people who have been betrayed are hurt by this situation, they guard themselves against future pain. They guard themselves by future hurts. Deciding not to trust anyone's love ever again. That's what happens. That's what happens. Not trusting nobody no more with their love. I've been cut too deep. I've been hurt too hard. The scars seem like another will end. I can't trust nobody no more. And that set of conviction that they might take upon themselves sometimes even includes the love of God. What a shame. You've been hurt so bad until you can't even trust God in love. You're the bad shit. Hallelujah. But you can always trust. Can I serve notice today? You can always trust the love of God. Because the remarkable thing about God's love for us is that it never ends. That's why you can trust Because there's no end to it. I know I'm talking to somebody because a lot of folks have been hurting you. You ain't got to even tell me how the Holy Ghost told me when I was studying the text. That's why he gave it to me. To the extent until some people are wondering, should I even trust God? But I come by to tell you the devil is a liar. You can trust God morning, noon, day, or night. You can trust him because his love is never ending. It never ends. Not only does it never end, God's love never fails. There's no failure in his love. Through your high point, he'll love you. Through your lowest points, he'll love you. When you're weak, he'll love you. When you're strong, he'll love you. Up, he'll love you. Down, he'll love you. If you have no money, he'll love you. If you're broke, he'll love you. If you're well, He'll love you. If you're sick and on your dying bed, he'll love you. A person might vow to love you forever, yet they fail to keep that promise. But God remains steadfast. He remains sure. Just like he told you he would, he will and would bring it to pass. Look at your neighbor and say, there's a never end. Let you go. 
his bow would hold on to you. Can I go to the cross because we're dealing with death, burial, and resurrection of Christ? I went to the cross. Can I go to the cross in my five minutes? Hanging on that cruel cross with crowns of thorns on his head. With nails in his hands and in his feet. With the soldiers at the foot of the cross with a sword in his hand. I serve you notice today, Church of God, that it was not the crown of thorns that kept him on the cross. It was not the soldiers that stood at the foot of the cross with a sword in their hands that kept my Savior on the cross. He wasn't afraid of the soldiers with the sword because if he wanted to, he could have called 10,000 angels. Hallelujah. So they didn't keep him on the cross. It wasn't the nails that they put in his hands and it wasn't the nail that they drove through his feet that kept him there. The nails went all the way through his hands and the nails went all the way through his feet, but that didn't keep him there. Because if he wanted to come down, he could have come down. Can I say this one more time? If he wanted to come down, he could have come down. But church of God, 